gonna be great. So right now we're gonna do our culture for dermatophytes, which is ringworm. So we've got a big boy here. This is our good friend, Kobe. Okay, and so Kobe's got some really nasty skin here. I'm gonna show you the skin. And so we're gonna do a few different tests on Kobe to see, and one of the tests we're gonna do is the dermatophyte culture. Um, I'm also gonna do a skin scrape. We're gonna, I'm gonna do um, a bacterial culture on him. So we have to pick a lesion, and he's got some pretty good lesions here on his neck. I don't know if you can see that really well, but he's got some nasty looking ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pat the spot, put some alcohol on there. So I've got my bottle of alcohol, I'm gonna put some alcohol. And I'm gonna use some gauze and pat it dry. I'm hoping you can see this. Okay. Now I'm just gonna take a regular old hemoset and we're gonna pluck some skin, or, or pluck some hair, sorry, out of the lesion. Okay, so I'll show you this here. Okay, now I'm gonna take my tray here, my DTM tray. Okay, and we're just going to put it in here on this. Add it down on there. All right. So now that we've got the skin and the hair and the medium, we're gonna set this out to incubate. Okay, I'm just gonna discuss the incubation of the DTM tray real quick. So the DTM tray um, is an agar and it has to be warm to room temperature before we use it. And so we can place a specimen in there. We usually use hair with a follicle still on it, but you can use nails and um, pus and all kinds of different stuff. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it incubate for 14 days. And that's up to 14 days. Usually what we do is about five days. So we put the agar in a dark, warm place. We let it sit for five days and then we look to see if there is any um, fluorescence. So fluorescence, it's a white looking, it almost looks kind of like mold looking. And so we'll check after five days and then we'll check again every day after that to see if we see anything. Okay, so thank you. I have my Dramatify, this is the DTM here. And so we're gonna open this up, it's been five days. It's been sitting in the dark at room temperature. Okay, and I really don't see any growth here. I don't know how well you can see this, but I don't really see any growth. So that would mean that we are negative for any type of ringworm. So I'm gonna go over here and we're going to go under the quant for Kobe Wilder. Oh, backwards. And we're gonna put in that he is ringworm negative. Okay. And that is it. Real quick, I wanted to show an example of dermatophytes. I could not, for some reason, find an example in my books. Um, but here is an example on my computer screen, so I'm sorry it's terrible quality. But this is what ringworm looks like when you look at it under the microscope. They're very long, elongated and they have little segments. They're pretty easy to pick out. Okay, so now we're going to use our friend here and get our bacteria culture. So I have my agar plate here and I'm gonna use a sterile swab. 
I'm literally just gonna get the swab out and pick a spot. So he's got some pretty nasty skin, so I'm gonna use this spot right here, okay? So I'm gonna use my swab. And just rub it around on the spot. Okay. So now I'm gonna get my petri dish with the agar. And I'm just gonna roll this around. So we're ready to incubate this. Okay, so we have our agar plate here. We're just going to, I've got a bag here we have labeled with the animal's name, it's bacterial culture in today's day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this culture down in the bag. And then we're gonna sit it in a dark spot for the next 24 hours and I'm gonna check it tomorrow. And then we're going to put some drops of medication on it and see if we have any growth. So our bacterial culture has been sitting for 24 hours now. So I have it here. Um, I'm gonna take this lid off real quick so you can see all the growth here. Okay, you can see the bacterial growth pretty well. Okay, all right. So what we're gonna do, put the lid back on for a second. Is I have these, um, what they are is antibacterial discs. Um, there's ampicillin, erythr erythromycin, penicillin, and neomycin. So, I'm gonna use one of each of these and I'm going to add them to the colony growth to see what happens, okay? All right, this one is the penicillin. And I'm just gonna pick one of these colonies and stick it on there. Okay. Okay, this one is erythromycin. This one is neomycin. They don't look like them to me, honestly. Okay. And last but not least, this one's ampicillin. So we've got our antibacterial discs here. So now we're going to incubate this. We don't have an incubator at our clinic, so I've kind of made one out of a cooler. And we've got it sitting in the window. And I've got a little shelf in it that I've made out of cardboard. Very handy dandy. And I'm literally gonna sit this in here Put the lid on. We're gonna let this sit in the window. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna look at our bacteria culture. Um, it has been sitting here for a couple days now, so let's see what we got. Okay, we do have a reaction. So as you can see here, none of these really have a reaction except for this one here, and you can see the reaction around. And so that one is the erythromycin. So that means that the erythromycin would be the one that would be able to treat whatever kind of infection this is. Okay, so now we just need to record that our bacteria culture. Poor Kobe. We're going to go ahead and we're going to talk to the doctor.
about probably putting him on some erythromycin just to treat whatever kind of infection this is. So we just caught urine for a urinalysis. I'm gonna pull up what we got here. To a syringe. I've got about three cc's here. So we're gonna use a urinalysis strip. We'll use the ones from Idex. Going to place a drop on each one of these. Okay. So I'm going to look and compare. I've got my computers pulled up here so I can put in all the results. Collection method was free catch. Color is yellow. Clarity. Clear. Volume 3 cc's. Then we're going to go through here our BLDHG. B is negative, bilirubin negative, UBG is normal, ketones negative, glucose negative, prokaryotes trace, Glucosides negative. pH is a 6. And then we're going to look under our refractometer for the specific gravity. So I'm literally going to put a drop of blood here. I meant urine, not blood. I'm looking to see. About 1.039. No, no blood. And the urine has a strong urine odor. There is no foam. Okay, I have a plain red top tube here with no additive. I'm going to put the urine into this tube. Okay, I'm going to put it into the centrifuge. And let that sit for 10 minutes. Okay, so the centrifuge has been spinning for 10 minutes, so we're going to get out our urine. Okay. I'm going to come over to the sink here. And I'm going to decant it until there's just about a drop left. Okay. Now we've got some new methylene blue stain here. Okay, so now that we have the new methylene blue stain open, we're going to put a drop in there. Shake it up. 
shake it up a little bit here. Now I'm going to grab a clean slot and add a drop. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to add a slip cover. So we're just going to look for some cast crystal cells, all that kind of stuff. This urine was a little bit acidic, but there doesn't seem to be any kind of infection, so I'm not really expecting to see a whole lot of anything. Good news is I can mute it. <laughs> what did you say you're being lazy? Because she's like, here you go. I was like, it's like a living. Crap, I'm going to have to close. I'm seeing a few white blood cells. But really no crystals. No cast so far either. Yeah. Not really a whole lot of anything special. <laughs> 